Good afternoon everyone, my name is George and I am back with another Adobe Premiere Pro tor tutorial. Um, going back to the basics of how to make our footage look cinematic, this time we're going to be studying and working on uh, GoPro footage. Now, a lot of videos on the internet now, uh, all of my videos in fact are all shot on GoPro. A lot of people ask how to get their, their footage more cinematic. And I'm basically going to be showing you how. It's really not that difficult. There's a few things that people don't understand about making their footage cinematic. Um, there's a few things that people do wrong. Uh, I've actually been guilty of doing it myself in the past. Um, so we're going to go into detail on how to make our footage look a bit more cinematic. Now I'm opening up a, a project that I recently put on YouTube called Experience Aruba. Um, for me it's probably one of my, my best looking videos yet. Um, it was shot all in 2.7K on the GoPro, uh, and in fact, to be honest, to get the best cinematic aspect, um, I shoot my GoPro in 2.7K, um, normally in 60fps, but to, to get the best cinematic uh, result, it's 24fps. And the reason why I shoot mine in 60fps is because a lot of the sports that I do, or a lot of the activities that I do, um, I slow down. So a lot of this video uh, I also use Twixter with and you have to have 60 FPS to use Twixter. So 2.7K takes up a lot of memory in your computer so I've got the iMac, uh, the MacBook Pro 15 inch, um, I've got it with 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of solid state storage and it's a quad core i7 and even that struggles to, to handle this footage. Um, if you start hearing a loud noise, it's actually the fan of my Mac because it heats up very, very quickly. The actual Mac itself, when I'm editing in 1080, uh, handles it so, so well, but with 2.7K, it really does struggle. Um, so, to give you a brief introduction, take check out the start of this video. I don't know how well it's actually going to run, but uh, if I put it in quarter, quarter playback, it might run a little bit better. That's just a brief introduction about what the video is, um, and it's it's running okay, so it's not too bad. Hopefully, this tutorial won't be so painfully slow. Now, the first things first with GoPro footage. What I used to do compared to what I now don't do is I I never put widescreen bars in the videos. Now, I'm going to quickly show you the difference between what it looks like with a widescreen bar and what it looks like without. Um, so I just downloaded something off Google. Um, if you literally just Google image search uh, widescreen bars, you, you'll, you'll get thousands. So now the reason why I don't, and to be honest with you, when you do add in widescreen bars, it looks pretty cool. But I'll show you why I don't do it. So on the actual time frame itself, when you actually add them in, it doesn't look too bad. It looks okay. Um, but the reason why I don't add them in is because if we go to YouTube, which is fundamentally where I upload all my videos, and if we whack it in full screen on the best quality that I, uh, that I uploaded it in, you can already see that the bottom, the top and the bottom are already widescreen. So adding more, adding the widescreen bars into the into the footage just looks silly, and it looks a bit a little bit too too crowded, and I don't like it. Um, considering how this kind of aspect here is already widescreen anyway, there is literally no point. Now I used to do that. Um, I don't anymore because because of that reason. Um, so don't think that just adding widescreen bars will make it look cinematic because it, it won't. Um, now in terms of me getting my cinematic look, it it doesn't actually take a lot, and it basically going back to what we did last time with um, with the footage I shot on my Canon. Um, I've got magic bullet looks, and it works wonders. Now the good thing about magic bullet looks is is basically a preset library of of thousands of different kind of kind of looks you can put onto your video. So I've got one here, and if I remove that, that's what the original footage looked like. Now my goal for this video is to kind of get it to look a little bit uh, 
more warmer uh, and not so uh, without so much contrast because it's a sunny island I think this looks great um, it makes the fish look a little bit warmer it makes the sea look a little bit nicer um, instead of that dark contrasty contrast kind of look um, I know with GoPro you can add on ProTune as well and some of this was shot in ProTune um, that really helps when it comes to to avoiding loss loss of video quality um, so I would definitely look into sticking your GoPro on ProTune as well um, I believe all Hero 3, 4 cameras will have them um, I've got the Hero 4 Black um, and it, it just looks crazy it looks amazing so with the Magic Bullet looks we can edit some of the looks in our video so I've got this one here with the C now if we go to looks here this is where all your presets will be so just hovering over them will change the kind of preset of what we got you can do really crazy effects like like this here um, you can do things like this uh, some of them look really really cool some of them I don't see why people would use it um, things like wedding basic gives it a nice soft glow um, the tobacco tilt gives it kind of like a hazy sky um, and a blur which you can edit as well the good thing about all these presets is they're all editable um, which is awesome uh, the good thing about this is you can also download loads so a lot of these here I've downloaded you can get free presets you can also pay for pay for presets you get professionals that make their own uh, which looks amazing um, but here's some of the ones that I've downloaded this ones I just found in um, presets online so you've got your cinematic folder up here uh, Indie is the one that I used um, again going back to the reason why I used Indie is to give it that nice warmer look um, Epic kind of brings out the contrast in the footage um, it makes it look a little bit darker and dull though and I don't like that so much uh, Miami is a good one now when you'd want to use Miami I will show you uh, one of the things I use Miami on now it makes the sky look really orange which again doesn't look that professional but if you use it for something like this here you can actually change the strength of the look so instead of it being a full orange sky like it like it was I've actually lowered the look effect so it doesn't actually look so bad now I've only lowered it by 30% but when it's on a hundred percent you can definitely see the difference in, in what it looks like but when it's on 70%, it kind of makes it a little bit less hazy and it actually gives a really, really nice kind of shot. And again, this look was on 100, but I've lowered it slightly down to 85 just so it's not so in your face and it's a little bit calmer. Um, and this again is one of the looks of Magic Bullet. It just looks great. So if I put it on full screen, you can kind of see the shot that you can get. And that's one of the looks I used. So it's again, it's gonna be that indie look and pre the, the preset name is indie. Um, compared to what it looked like before, you can clearly see the difference in, in how much different it looks with that preset on. Now, with without the preset it still looks really really good it doesn't look too bad at all but again my aim for this video was to go for a really nice warm feel um and not that deep contrast look that the gopro sometimes gives out so as you can see this the, the sea around here um, and the shadows here they all look very very dark but there's also a lot of contrast in it as well and also one of the reasons why they look dark is because they're a set of x the sun's right behind them but even when you add in that filter you can see how much of an improvement it makes to, to how the video feels. And I also use the same underwater, so it's the same preset here, but underwater, you can kind of see how well it works underwater as well. Um, it just brings out loads of colors, makes the, sea looks, makes the sea look really blue. And again here, compared to the, this this part of the, the, the sea here, it just looks it just looks nicer to watch for me. So instead of it being that, that contrasty, dark, dull color, it's now a really warm feeling that you get watching the video. So just to slightly recap, I wouldn't suggest using widescreen bars 
I, d I don't like the use of it. Um, I th I think it kind it, lo it looks cool when you when you first do it, but after a while, when you when you kind of notice that it just takes up too much space in the video, there's not a huge amount of point doing it, um, especially if it's already widescreen anyway. The best thing to do is to to get magic bullet looks. Um, now, for people that don't have magic bullet looks, that that's not an issue. You can get around that. So, let's do this without magic bullet looks. So, what I would do is let's get rid of this filter. Let's pretend we don't have looks on it anymore. I would first of all add brightness and contrast to the image, or to the video, sorry. And I would also add a tint. Now, if you saw my last tutorial video, this is going to be very, very similar. So when you add in the tint, it's going to be black and white as standard, but we don't want that. We want to give it a nice, warm, fuzzy look. So let's go to the orange hue. Let's do like a light orange. And we're going to do the same with this one as well. I normally make both my colors orange just to maximize the, the feel you get. Um, once you do that, the whole image will be orange because you tinted, the, you tinted it 100% to be orange. So we're just going to drag that down to zero. And we're just going to slowly increase it until it looks a bit warmer. So normally 10% is about the limit. Um, and as you can see, when you do 10 versus 0, there's still a difference there as well. Now again, with the brightness and contrast, we can lower the contrast or increase it. And again, if we're increasing the contrast, you're going to get that, that, that dark color again. So I normally decrease it slightly, kind of fade it out. With the brightness, I can raise that ever so slightly. Um, just to give that slightly warmer feeling. Now, if we look at this without these two, you can see the diff, like the warm feeling there. I think the tint, tint's maybe a little bit too much, so let's put it on six. Um, that just gives us a slightly warmer look. Now, you're not going to get the same results when you use it without magic, but it looks, but with, with GoPro footage, the easiest way to get round to using it without magic, but it looks, is to get that brightness and contrast setting um, and get that tint. The other one you can also add as well is the HLS, which is um, hue, lightness, and saturation. So obviously the hue will change the color aspect of it. You don't really want to mess around with that too much unless you can create cool things like change the definition here so you can make it there's slightly more of a red tint. Um, although I won't really focus on that too much because it's really difficult to kind of to make the color look natural. You can up the saturation slightly as well, but you don't want to do it too much. So as you can see around here is when you get these horrible, I don't know what they're actually called, they actually have a name for them, but you get that horrible kind of like warping effect, which sucks. So if you want to add in the saturation, make it minimal. You know, between four and six altogether. With lightness as well, you can kind of change that and add a little bit more lightness to the image. Um, that's if you really need to though, that's only if you really want to tweak it, that tiny extra amount. Normally I kind of just don't use that. Um, I normally just yeah add on that tint and lower the contrast and just up the brightness slightly. Um, you can mess around with the tint as well, so you can have one color orange, you can have one color red um, to kind of give it that, that hazy kind of tint there, which also looks pretty cool. Um, you can also really mess around with the filters and make it blue. So you might want to make it blue and orange for underwater use. That would that would work really really well. Um, the light blue might work for cinematic aspects as well. So you want to give it that kind of like retro style look. You can do that also, um, and as you can see, this kind of this kind of filter here gives you the same kind of filters that you'd see on Instagram um, and other apps like that to give it that kind of retro style, which I think looks really really cool. Um, so if you don't have magic bullet looks, don't worry. You don't actually have to use it at all. The alternative would be using the tint option and messing around with that and doing that brightness and contrast. Um, that that's really about it that's just some useful tips to kind of get your footage cinematic um again make sure we're shooting in a good mode on the gopro as well a lot of people that shoot in kind of like 1080 you don't get the same results i always shoot in 2.7k i've tried shooting in 4k as well but for this for the, the amount of memory and processing it takes up it's my max is too slow for it so i normally film in 2.7k that normally helps a lot um and i hope this tutorial helps as well if you want to see the whole video, um, I'll put a, an, a link in the description or I'll, I'll put a link somewhere on the screen. Um, but I will be making more GoPro tutorials on how to make your, your footage look better. Um, but yeah, I hope this helps. Thanks for watching, guys. If you need any questions or anything, just 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 pop it, pop your comments into the um, sorry, pop your questions into the comment section. 
um, and I'll be sure to answer them. But yeah, thanks for watching. I really hope this helps and I'll, I'll be doing some more tutorials soon. Thank you.